hello my beautiful people you are welcome to my channel i'm vivian and today i want to show you some formulas and calculations you need to know in sewing so there are times you might forget to take certain measurements on the body of your client or if measurements were sent to you and there are measurements that are missing so don't worry you have formulas to get this measurement and these are what i'll be showing to you today so if you're new to this channel i say a very big welcome to you and also welcome back my subscribers god bless you all you guys are wonderful and i hope you're all doing great you are very welcome so if you're new to this channel i will encourage you to be part of this wonderful family just hit on the subscribe button below and also turn on the notification bell beside it so that whenever i upload a new video you'll be notified so i upload videos on this channel every week on sewing tutorials fashion tips business you know fashion business tips and a lot of things diy I believe you will not want to miss out so subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so, so to subscribe is absolutely free i hope you know that so thank you so much for joining so today i will show you these formulas that you need to know okay we have formulas for deriving a lot of things in sewing how to get a very nice bust curve your armhole lens bust pan in case you know you forgot to measure it on the body of your client or if you have clients that are not comfortable for you measuring their bust point that is from one bust or from one nipple to the other you don't need to do that you don't need to tell your client to raise their hands for you to measure their armhole lens no we have formula for that you don't need to stress your clients measuring their crotch lens if you want to make a trouser we have formula for that we have formula for a lot of things in sewing a lot of measurements in sewing so i'll be showing this to you please watch to the end so that you don't miss out on any formula or calculations there are tricks and hacks okay we use in sewing to get a nice outfit and they are very very accurate yes they are very very accurate you can rely on them any day any time so without taking so much of your time let's move straight to the lesson of the day okay i hope you have your pen and paper to put down these formulas so the first one is the armhole depth yes some of us already know this but there are still people who don't know this okay so we're starting with our armhole depth so i have a basic bodice pattern here so i believe you already know how to draft a basic bodice pattern but in case you don't i'll be leaving the link in the description box below so this is just a basic bodice pattern so we have a shoulder line and from the shoulder this is the shoulder measurement placed here then came down by one inch and made the shoulder slope because our shoulders are not straight so we we'll have to slope it so now to get our armhole depth which is this measurement here okay so in case you didn't measure it on your clients you don't have to worry what you will do is this the formula is simple so i'll just give you the simplest formula and this is it your shoulder measurement divided by two so what it simply means is what you have here the measurement you have here because you, you know your fabric or paper has to be on fold that is your 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 working on quarter of your fabric or paper so the measurement you're placing here is your shoulder divided by two right so that's the same measurement you should use as your armhole depth so armhole depth formula is the shoulder the shoulder divided by two okay so this is the formula for your armhole depth so if my shoulder is 14 inches divided by 2 that is 7 inches now note this this 7 inches that is the armhole depth you can use it the way it is okay but if you want ease if you want the armpit area to be a bit free you can add 0 0.5 to this okay but if you want it fitted at the armhole area you just use this 
answer okay but if you want it a little bit free for example you're making a shift dress or a shirt just add 0 0.5 to have it free at the armhole area okay then if you're making a sleeveless dress you, when you're making a sleeveless dress you don't want the armpits to be so exposed so you want it a little bit fitted at the arm whole area so what you would do is just minus 0 0.5 from this okay so you just minus 0 0.5 and what you get is 6.5 so i hope this is clear i said your armhole depth what the measurement you'll be placing there is your shoulder measurement divided by two. That is exactly what you have here. So you can use the answer the way it is for fitted armhole area. But if you want it a little bit free, you add 0 0.5. Then if you're making a sleeveless, because you don't want it so open at the armhole area, you minus 0 0.5 from your original answer. Okay, so I hope this is clear. This is how to get your armhole depth. Very, very simple. And normally, when you are taking measurement, we usually start from the shoulder measurement. So ordinarily, you have the shoulder measurement. But in case you were sent a measurement and the shoulder measurement was omitted, how to get it is simple. What you do, as far as you have the bust measurement, that is the bust circumference, what you do, the bust circumference divide by six okay plus 1.5 this will give you the shoulder measurement that is half of the shoulder measurement what you should have here so in a nutshell this is another formula for getting your armhole depth but i decided to give you this one because it is just simple by the time you have placed it here you use the same measurement on your armhole for your armhole depth so these are the two measurements for deriving your armhole depth so it's just easy to use this one so you can use this one when you have the when the shoulder measurement is not given okay so i hope this is clear so this is it about our armhole depth so now we we'll move to the next one which is the boss span so you need your boss span when you want to place your darts or when you want to create a bustier top or blouse okay so you need your bust span so the next formula we'll be placing is our bust span so usually to get the bust span what you do you measure from one nipple to the other divide by two so we sometimes call it the nipple to nipple so your nipple to nipple divide by two will give you your bust span so in a situation where you are not able to measure or to take the measurement on the client you have a formula to get that and the formula is simple okay so the formula is your bust circumference divide by eight minus one so this will give you your bust span for example, if the bus circumference is 40, divided by 8, E is 5. Then minus 1 from it, you have 4. So this is the bus span. So I hope this is clear. This is the bus span for a bus circumference of 40. So from one nipple to the other is 8 inches. So like I said, your bus span is nipple to nipple divided by 2. So this answer is just the bus span. So to know the nipple to nipple measurement, you just times this by 2. Okay. So when you times it by 2, it will give you 8. So nipple to nipple is 8 inches. Then the bus span is four that is divided by two you have four so this is it about the boss span so next we'll move to the boss cup size okay for the boss cup size okay this is one that usually gets a lot of people confused but i'm going to give you a very simple formula a trusted formula that you can use to get the boss cup of any boss size okay so the formula for that is the bus circumference, the bus circumference minus the under bus, under bus circumference, okay, divide by two. 
so i would explain this now this is our basic bodies okay this is the boss area the boss points and this is the under boss now the boss circumference minus the under boss circumference divide by two that is what you use to get your boss cup you know for um when you're making a bust a bustier top or a bustier blouse you need the bust cup so now let me show you i have taught you how to get your boss pan so you place your boss pan so let's say this is the boss pan here and if you're making a bustier blouse you have to add half inch to your boss pan because you'll be cutting okay you know you'll be cutting out the dart so let me just show you so let's assume that this is the boss pan plus half inch you know you have to mark it from the boss points all the way down then you connect sorry this is a rough work so i'm just drawing you with that ruler so this is the boss pan now to get your bust cup you know this is the side where we have the fullest part of our boss that is this arm pit area armhole area that is where we have the fullest part of our, of our bust and that is where the bust cup would be so what you do at this under bust here you would whatever you get here your bust circumference minus the under bust divided by two okay let's say my bust circumference is 36 the under bust is 32 okay so 36 minus 32 that is 4 okay now divide by 2 my answer is 2 so this 2 now this answer that is what I would mark on this side okay so I'll mark 2 here why on this side I would mark 1 I would mark 1 now this one here it can be used for all bust size this side remain constant one even some people use half but i prefer to use one so that by the time you cut out the dart and you join the busts would be you know you have it standing and accommodating the bust very well so this side should remain one constant while on this side you take whatever you get here that is what you place on this side of your bust of your blouse or top okay so now sorry for the background noise please this two you mark it all the way down from the under bust to the waist to the hip depending on the length of your blouse okay you mark it all the way down why the one you're taking on this side you also mark it all the way down and you connect like so like so Okay, now at the boss point, you come down by one inch. So why we come down by one inch is to avoid the, it being pointy or sharp at the bust point, at the bust area. So by the time you come down by one inch, you then connect it to this point with a curve. So let me just use my curve. So you just connect like so, using a curve, okay, like so. And you also connect this one. This one don't have to be too curvy. This is the the main area. This side is the main area where we have our bust. Okay. So by the time you have done this, now it depends on the kind of bustier top you're making. It could be tube top. It could be princess dart. It could be shoulder dart. Okay. Depending on what you're making. By the time you have gotten this side, this other side, what you will do if you're making a princess dart, you will measure the armhole curve. By the time you measure it, you find the midpoint, okay? So by the time you have gotten the midpoint, you connect it to the boss. So let me just use the ladder this time around. Just connect it to the boss point, like so. By the time you have connected it, sorry, this is just a rough work. By the time you have connected it to the boss point, you come up by one inch also. The same way you came down by one inch here, you also come up by one inch. Then on this side, you mark one, okay? Whatever you mark on this side is what you also mark here. You mark one on this side, you also mark one on this side. That is one inch from the midpoint. You mark one inch on this side, you mark one inch on this side. Then you connect it to this one inch step up, okay? So this is when you are making a princess dart bustier. So I hope this is clear. So by the time you have done this, you now connect from this point to this point. That is to eliminate this sharpness at the boss area or at the boss point. So you just connect, okay? 
okay so by the time you connect from here to here like so by the time you connect like so you will eliminate the sharpness at the boss and you have your boss cup so you can see this you have your boss cup then you also connect this one this one is already connected like so so you just cut it out like this okay and you cut out this one also like this this is your boss cup so this is actually accurate yes i have done this over the years and i have always come out with a nice boss cup i've also taught you know similar thing in my previous videos where i taught bustier blouses princess that and all that so this is just the formula very easy you can try it if you haven't done it before just the bust circumference minus the under bust circumference divide by two whatever you have here that is what you will use on this side if your answer is three you will use three because it has to do with the bust size of the person or the bust measurements of the person so if you have some with a bigger bust you would definitely have a larger figure here and that is to help you accommodate the bust of the person okay so while on this side you can just use one or half inch one inch is preferable so by the time you cut out this dart and you join you have the cup forming very very well okay so that is it about our bust cup size and i hope this is clear to you and don't forget by the time you have cut out your dart you surely replace it at this point at this side okay whatever measurement you have cut out here one inch here two inches here that is three inches you replace it at this side so that by the time you join the blouse will not be tight on the person so this is just the formula for getting your boss cup and if you're going to buy like already made a um, boss cup that's already made a um, cup that, that you usually attach to corset or to your blouse this will help you because by the time you have done this by the time you have done this whatever you get here your boss circumference minus your under boss whatever you get here will give you the size of your core it is usually labeled a b c like that so this is a size four okay if you if you solve this and you get five it is size five if you solve it and you get six it is size six okay so that is how it is it is cutting that is how you get it your your boss circumference minus your under boss will give you your cup size so because you're making a bustier blouse that is why we divided by two okay to help you get what you would mark on this side okay so by the time you go to the market you ask for size four it will be your boss cup okay so that is it so now let's move to the next formula which is a our sleeve caps height okay so by the time you have made your blouse you want to add a sleeve to it what you will do is this you to draft your sleeve you need to know your sleeve caps height so what is the sleeve cap size now let's okay let's say this is our sleeve we want to make a sleeve this is our fabric or food so you want to make a sleeve you have to know the sleeve cap size so let me give you the formula so formula for sleeve cap size is your boss second friends divide by 12 plus 1 boss second friends divide by 12 plus 1 so you can see that in all these formulas the boss second friends is very important and i know that this is one measurement you don't miss when you're taking measurement or anybody is taking any measurement this boss measurement is always there so that is why we we'll always use it to um, get other measurements that are missing so now this is the formula to get our boss our sleeve caps height okay so if the boss circumference is 36 divided by 12 that is 3 plus 1 that is 4 so the sleeve caps height here is 4 now this is my fabric of food okay I want to drop my sleeve I need this sleeve cap height. So the sleeve cap height is this top side of your sleeve. Now you measure the length of your sleeve. You mark it. The next measurement to take is the sleeve cap height. You measure from here to where it is. So let's say this is where the four 
is you mark it so it is on this line of your slip calves height that you place your armhole length so this armhole length you have here the armhole length you have here that or the armhole depth you have here that is what you would mark on this sleeve calves height line so let's say this is where it is okay you mark it so by the essence of doing this is by the time you have drafted your sleeve let it would match up with your armhole on the bodies okay so you mark your sleeve calf height on that line of your that is you mark your armhole length on that uh, line of the sleeve calf's height okay i hope this is clear from this is this our fabric on fold then from the top of the fabric you mark your sleeve calf's height so this is how to get it you mark it then on that line of the sleeve calf's height you mark your armhole length then you connect it that you just draw a line to this edge that is you draw a line to the edge by the time you have drawn a line you mark the midpoint of this line you just come up by half inch on the midpoint of the line then you make a curve to this edge and you curve down also to this side okay so by the time you have done this so you can see that you have formed your armhole for your sleeve okay then on the length of your sleeve you mark your round sleeve and you connect okay so you can see you have done your sleeve so you can see why you need to know your sleeve calf side because it's at that point that you mark your armhole depth so that by the time you have curved that and cut your sleeve it will now match up with your armhole on the bodies okay so this is simply how to get your sleeve caps height so i hope this is very clear your bust circumference divided by 12 plus 1 so just solve it and you get what you mark from the top of your fabric to get your sleeve armhole and all that so this is just it about the sleeve caps height so now we'll move to the next formula so now the next one is our off shoulder neck line okay so i actually have made a, a tutorial on this channel on how to draft your off shoulder the pattern off shoulder bodies so here in case you haven't watched that video so i'm giving the giving you the formula for deriving your off shoulder neckline like you can see here okay you need to know what to do to get a nice neckline for your off shoulder dress or blouse so how to do that is very very simple your bust your bust pan plus one so your bust pan plus one okay so let's say the bust pan is four inches so here the formula is what bust pan plus one so if the bust one uh, bust pan is four inches plus one that will be five okay so your when your fabric is on fold what you measure for your neckline is five okay to give you this neckline okay so this is your boss pan that is your nipple to nipple here by the time you add one to reads and open it up you see the extension you will have okay so this is just simply and um, simply how to get it let's say this is your fabric and you want to make your off shoulder you would have minus the shoulder if you have watched my previous tutorial you would have minus your shoulder and this point is where you place your neckline so by the time you have added one inch to your bust pan you just take the measurements here okay by the time you take the measurements here you come to the under bust that is same um, you come to the upper bust the upper bust let's say this is the upper bust line then you place your bust circumference there and you connect to have your arm hole okay so from the arm hole you connect your under bust to the waist and to the hip okay you have your arm you have your off shoulder neckline that is the, the, the width for your off shoulder neckline okay that is your off shoulder neckline width then for the depth you can just come down by half inch and you connect like so to have your off shoulder neckline so you can see the off shoulder neckline the armhole okay so this is actually off shoulder neckline and um, depth 
so this is um, off shoulder neckline weight okay so this is the weight to get your off shoulder weight very simple just your boss second your boss pan plus one will give you a nice off shoulder weight then now we we'll move to the sleeve how to get the remaining part of the off shoulder after getting the neckline then the sleeve so that is our number six our off shoulder sleeve okay so now haven't gotten the neckline for your off shoulder to get the sleeve what you do you measure the round shoulder by the time you measure the round shoulder you minus what you have as your neckline. So let's say the round shoulder is 40. So um, let me put down the formula. So off shoulder sleeve. So let me solve it here because this space will not be enough. So now your off shoulder sleeve. Your off shoulder sleeve is your round shoulder. The round shoulder. You have to measure your round shoulder minus the round neckline so why did i say round neckline uh, neckline because you have to measure the front and the back okay and like in my previous tutorial i told you that what you have in the front is also the same thing at the back so if you have five here at the back is also five so the round shoulder let's say for example the round shoulder is 40 minus the round sleeve if you have you know when it is on fold it is five right remember when it's on four, it is five. When you open it up, it is what? Ten. I hope this is clear. That is from here to here is ten, but half of it is five when it's on four. So you have ten in front and ten at the back. So your round shoulder is 40. The round neckline is what? Ten plus ten. That is 20. Okay, I hope this is clear. Ten in front and ten at the back. That is 20. So 40 minus 20 is 20 so this 20 now is for your sleeve width that is here and here and the back okay so meaning that 20 is for the two sleeves 20 is for the two sleeves so you have to divide this by two for each of the sleeve but our advice you just go straight dividing by four because the fabric will be on fold and you're working on quarter part which is one two and at the back three and four okay so what you do is divide this by four okay so actually the formula is round shoulder minus round neckline divide by four i hope this is clear so by the time you divide by four your answer will be five meaning that this side is five this side is five the back is five the other side is five okay so when you're you're drafting the sleeve you have to place your fabric on fold and you measure five for the width so that by the time you open it up you have 10 on each side of the sleeve so i hope this is clear so this is the formula for getting your off shoulder sleeve so by the time you have gotten the neckline as i have taught you here you also solve this to get for the sleeve okay so i have a detailed tutorial on how to make your off shoulder and um, bodies so i have a tutorial on that and i'll be linking it down in the description box so in case you haven't watched that video you just go and watch it it's very very detailed so this is it for our off shoulder sleeve so now we'll move to the next one yes so now the next one is crotch depth if you're making a trouser you don't need to Take the crotch depth measurement on your clients okay you don't need to do that you have a formula for deriving that as far as you have measured the hip you don't need to go ahead the, uh, measuring the crotch depth so let's let me just show you for example this is our trouser so don't mind the drawing okay it's just to show you so this is our trouser uh -huh. yes now from this waist to the under hip, you know, that is your crotch, the, the crotch. So you want to know the length of this crotch. Instead of measuring it on your client, what you should simply do is take the hip measurement. So the crotch depth is your hip circumference divided by four. 
okay so divide by four minus one if you're making for a lady but for a man or for men you just leave it as this just leave it as because they are trousers for men the trousers is not really fitted under here but for ladies you have to minus one okay so i hope this is clear your crotch depth for ladies hip circumference divide by four minus one this is for female this is for female why for male you just leave it the way it is hip circumference divide by four okay so this is it so because for female you need it a bit fitted at this point you don't want it you know having so much fabric that you need it fitted and well relaxed on the hip area so you minus one so let's say if the hip circumference is 40 minus and um, divide by four so have 10 then if this is for a, a male you leave the answer at this that is you use 10 for the crotch depth but if you're making for a lady minus one from it and you have nine so what you measure from the from the waist of your client that is when you're drafting or when you're cutting what you do from the waist you measure nine that would be the crotch depth okay for your client that would be the crotch depth so i hope this is clear just your hip circumference divided by four minus one for female and just the exact answer for male okay so this is for crotch depth now let's see the next formula we have all right the next formula is the distance between the hip and that is the distance between the waist and the hip points the distance so why do you need this for example you're making a skirt let's say you're making a skirt this is the hip okay don't mind my drawing so you want to know this is the waist here this is the waist and this is the hip this point is the hip so you want to know the distance between this waist and the hip okay how do you do that it is simple if you know your hip points from your basic body so when you were measuring the person you measure from the shoulder to the hip you measure from the shoulder to the waist what you do that measurement from the shoulder to the hip you you note it down that is a, that is a hip point then minus the measurement from the shoulder to the waist that will give you the distance between the waist and your hip when you're making a skirt okay so the distance between the waist and the hip is the hip point minus the waist point that will give you this side okay so it is simple you just note the you know when you're making when you're taking your measurement you have to make take the vertical measurement that is from the shoulder to your bust to your under bust to the waist to the hip so once you know that the hip point minus the waist point will give you the distance between your waist and your hip for your skirt okay or even for your trouser so this is it for this now we move to the next one all right the next one is a dart length okay so i would have shown you that on the basic bodies before this so you're if you're making a basic bodies pattern just a no, that is a normal basic bodies and you want to place a waist dart so you need to know how long your dart should be okay so that is what i want to give to you now so your dart should be one inch from the bust from the bust point one inch from the bust point and two inches before the hip two two inches before the hip point the hip point okay so let me explain this one inch from the bust point and two inches before the bust point now you have your basic bodies like so let's say this is the um, the bust point the under bust the waist and you have the hip here 
the bust, under bust, waist and hip. Now, you place your shoulder, you come down. This is the neck depth. This is the shoulder slope. You have your armhole depth like so. So this is a rough work, I hope you know. Now, you place your bust pan. You have placed this is the bust pan. Now, you want to make your darts. So, for the normal waist darts, your dart should start one inch from the boss. Your dart should not get to the boss point. So you come down by one inch. Then at the hip area, you come up by two inches. So this is what I mean. So your dart should start from one inch from the boss point. One inch from the boss point that is down and two inches before the hip. So the dart should not get to the hip. Okay. So at the waist, you take half inch on this side and half inch on this side and you create your darts like so so i hope this is clear so this is your dart length your that should be from the dart length should be from this point to this point one inch from the bust point and two inches before the hip point this is your dart length okay for normal waist darts so this is it but when you're making a bustier blouse your dart will cut across to the hip but when you are taking your circumference that is when you're placing your circumference measurement make sure you replace your dart whatever you're cutting out here should be replaced at this side of your pattern so that by the time you join you don't have it being tight so this is it above our dart length so now we we'll move to the next one so we have the tenth one which is flay so then i would give you for the two major flays we usually use so we have the 180 degree flay and 360 degree flay so the formula we have for our flay let me go with the 360 first of all you know the 360 is a circle and in mathematics, the circumference of a circle, to get the circumference is pi r square. I don't want to go deep into that. But just to give you the formula you use when you want to cut your flay to get that inner circle. Okay, you know, this is a flay. And this is the part you'll be joining to your dress. Whatever you're using it for, either as a peplum or as a flay at the down part of your dress. Let's say this is a dress. Okay, so have it there. I want to add a flay to it or a peplum. So this part where you'll be joining the peplum is this inner circle. So how do you know how to cut this? So if you're making a 360 degree flay, the formula you will use is the circumference, wherever you're adding it to, if it's as a sleeve, that is flay for the sleeve or at the waist, whatever circumference, you divide that circumference by 6.28 this is just from mathematics from pi r square so just note this this is what you use to divide your circumference for example the waist so see if you're adding this to the waist so it will be the waist circumference divide by 6.28 so this will give you the radius for cutting this inner circle okay so for example i want to cut a flare by the time i fold my fabric into four like so i want to know what i'll measure to be able to have this inner circle like i said your waist circumference or whatever you're adding it to the circumference divided by 6.28 whatever the answer is for example if the answer is three uh, what i'll do is measure three from this point so let me place it like this so you understand from this point you measure three you measure three all around you keep measuring three from this point and you cut it out so by the time you cut it out you also measure the length of the flay from this point the length of your flay you measure and you cut it out so by the time you cut it out you have your flay so this part is the waist okay where you'll be joining to the waist so this is it for cutting or the formula for getting your 360 degree flay so for 180 you know that 180 is half of 360 what you do is divide this by two so if you want to make a 180 degree flay 
what you do is you divide your waist circumference by 3.14 that is half of this so whatever you get that is what you will use as your radius so radius is the distance between this point and this point where you mark so by the time you cut it out you have a perfect circle for your flay okay so let me just cut it out using my hand i'm not working with scissors now so you have your flay so you can see what i have here okay so you join it to your dress and you have your flay so this is simply how to cut your or the formula for your 360 degree flay and 180 so for 360 degree flay you use 6.28 to give you a flay like this but for the 180 degree flay it's a bit standy so you divide your waist circumference or wherever you're adding it to you divide that circumference by 3.6 by 3.14 so we usually use this where we are making a ball dresses okay so we usually make 180 degree flay when we're making ball dress then when we're making peplum tops and all that we use 360 degree so i'll be making a special video for the different types of flays and how to cut them okay so this is it for our formula so i've given you 10 formulas just go through them one after the other and apply them when you're making your dresses so feel free to also drop your question in the comment section if you have any question or if there is any formula i've not given you can go ahead and ask your question in the, the comment section below and i would answer you okay so thank you so much for watching also check the description box for some other videos you have not watched i'll be leaving the links there thank you and god bless you and please if you have not yet subscribed please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever i upload a new video thank you so much for watching god bless you see you in my next video bye